Hello, welcome to Explore Classroom. My name is Kip Hotman, and I am so glad you are joining us today. At National Geographic, we use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. This month, we are gearing up for Earth Day, which is coming up this weekend on April 22nd. And we are talking all about the importance of elephants. So today, our explorer is none other than Sangita Ayer, a conservationist, educator, author, multiple award-winning nature and wildlife filmmaker, and also the recipient of the Nari Shakti Award, the highest award from the president of India, and finally, the founder of Voice for Asians. Wow, friends, you are in for a treat with Sangita who is going to share the challenges that elephants face and what they can teach us about kindness and freedom. We're gonna start with a short video from Sangeeta to kick things off. What a fabulous clip. And I want to say hello and welcome, Sangeeta. And thank, thank you for the inspirational clip, my friend. Of course. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here and so awesome to see the beautiful, sweet faces. Hi, guys. Hello, everybody. <laughs> well, we truly appreciate you spending the time with us today. And I'm sure the teachers and kiddos do as well. And before we kick things off to learn all about elephants, we're super curious to learn a little bit about you. What inspired you to pursue your path as an educator and an explorer? Well, I love nature. I love all the creatures of the earth and in particular, these precious little elephants. I love them to pieces. And I was born and raised in India. And when I was three years of age, my grandparents used to take me to this temple where I met a wonderful, handsome elephant and I fell in love with him. And as I grew older, I kept thinking about what can I do to save them? I started realizing the challenges they're facing and it was breaking my heart. And I said, I can do something. And so I started writing, I started producing films, I started doing reports. And here we go, I'm able to share it with all the wonderful children of the world. I was just like you once upon a time. What a, what a inspirational and fabulous background. Thank you so much for sharing that, Sangeeta. And <laughs> now, yeah, it's time to, to learn all about elephants. And my, my colleague, Andre, is going to play a clip that provides insight, a little bit of information into how elephants communicate. Trumpets are high frequency, loud and iconic calls. When an elephant trumpets, it means it is very much agitated or angry, telling the intruder to back off. This herd is communicating through touch. After a gentle push from a wise elder, a young female elephant postures. She seems to be warning the curious babies not to cross the line. Now watch how they touch each other with their trunk. It's called tactile communication. Perhaps they're planning how to deal with us. Here, the matriarch or the aunt is trying to comfort the little one and the baby responds. This kind of touchy-feely behavior is often seen among females. What a wonderful clip as well. Wow, Sangeeta, 
Mm -hmm. You have so much information about communication in these documentaries. I love it. And as a child, I remember the trumpet calls like in videos and teachers talking about them in classes, but I never really understood the importance. And could you tell us a little bit about what it's like to hear these beautiful sounds in person? And are there different differences in, in these trumpet calls or just elephant calls in general around the world? Well, there's yet another call and it's chirping. They go cook, 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 and they chirp and they communicate with each other. That's because they're a little bit agitated. They're a little bit nervous and they're trying to tell each other, okay, let's be careful here. But trumpet is like, mm, now I'm angry. Get out of my life. Get out of my face. Get out of my way. So that's what that elephant was trying to tell us. We were quite a distance and actually it was me in the backside of an open safari jeep a guide was inside a driver was inside i was all alone when you saw and then you hear the roaring sound they are like mm, now you really made us angry you really get out of my home so they don't like intrusion they are very private, they're very shy, and yet they're very sort of tolerant. So even though we were inside their homes, they were trying to communicate with us, they were trying to um, convey to us that they don't like this, but at the same time, they were never aggressive. They just tried to make these noises. And yet you saw how they touch each other with their trunk and they're trying to comfort each other. So so the mommy, the auntie, and all of, you know, the entire herd, by the way, this herd is made of only female elephants, and they all love and nurture their little ones, as you can see, and the little ones are so curious, trying to come towards our Jeep, they want to know what this woman was doing in the backside of the truck, and then the mommy says, no, 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 don't go too close, she's a stranger, she doesn't belong to our species, you know, just like how our mom and dad would do right if you guys go and you're curious you want to see something you want to touch somebody or you want to say hello mom and dad will say hmm, just be a bit careful right that's what those big you know adult elephants were trying to do so they communicate they express their anger they express their frustration but they also express their gentleness and love by touching each other and by this time this herd had gotten very comfortable with us and they knew we are not going to hurt them. So they were very calm around us, but they still were cautious. What I got is watching is just how intelligent these animals are. It's, it's just amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that, Sangeeta. And, okay, friends. So it's now time for Andre to share another video clip. But this time we're focusing on elephant rides and, and what may seem fun to us isn't necessarily what's best for elephants. Andre, take it away. This juvenile bull hobbles to catch up with his herd. He's not even 10 years old. He's handcuffed like a prisoner because they fear he might run away. These riding chairs, commonly known as howda in India, will no doubt comfort the tourists. But the discomfort they cause to elephants is totally ignored. The chairs, weighing between 400 to 600 pounds, are placed on their protruding spine. An elephant expert, quoted by the Dodo, a popular animal rights American media brand, says, in addition to wearing down the delicate tissue and bones on an elephant's back, the chairs can also damage the skin and cause painful lesions on the elephant's body. The rope that secures the howdah to ensure the tourists are safe is cruelly tightened beneath the tail. Adding to all of this discomfort is the sheer weight of people. An adult elephant is forced to carry at least four people, and a young elephant carries three, including the handler. Sangeeta, such a powerful clip. And yeah. Um, I know, I, and I, I, I want to dig into it a little bit with you. Is just if you could share for the audience you're watching, like what the, what are the most important takeaways about elephant rides that we should know, and then also thinking of solutions. What what can we do to help? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, whenever you see, um, you know, an elephant back ride for entertainment, just think about, you know, the elephant's back. A lot of people have this misperception that because this is a big, enormous animal, you know, he or she can carry maximum weight, a lot of weight. Actually, it's the neck of the elephant that is the strongest. And so in the ancient times, when we did not have trucks or when we did not have all these advanced mechanization, elephants used to drag the logs. But now we have advanced mechanization. We don't need it. And the elephants, their spine is protruding. That means through the vertebrae, they have the spines that are poking up. So when anything is put on the back of their, especially something so heavy, like 300 kilos of chair, it really crushes their back and it rubs against their skin. And you know, the rope that goes beneath the tail, they can't even poop. They can't even pee. They can't do anything because it's all considered, you know, whatever is good for humans is what these riders think about. So when you are invited to go for a ride next time, please think twice and please share with your friends and your family that elephant back rides are not a good thing. And please explain to them that elephants are very social animals. They always want to be with their mom and dad and friends and hang out together. They graze together. They eat together. They walk together. Whereas when you see these elephants, you know, alone giving elephant back rides, they are not only hurting physically, they're also hurting emotionally because they miss their family, they miss their friends. So the only thing I would ask of you is to think about what the other animal is going through and try to share whatever you're learning here today to help spread the message and stop elephant back rides. There are so many other ways that we can entertain ourselves, right? We really don't need elephants to be entertaining us. So that's the takeaway for you today. Thank you for that, Sangeeta. And, and please know your, you know, your passion is it's so energizing and and we really appreciate the insight. I'd never had that as a kid. So that's good to know. Solutions, you know, we can avoid the elephant rides and spread the word to, you know, protect and take care of the elephants. Um, okay, friends, Andre has one last video clip to share, and then we're going to move on to our question and answer portion. Um, and have you ever wondered how elephants impact the world? It is time to find out. Andre. There are other wild large body species like gar, beam domestic cattle, domestic buffaloes, and take them some distance. The problem is that these species are all ruminants. So part of their digestive strategy is to get as much as they can out of everything that they eat. So they'll often regurgitate their food and just sit there chewing it. And in the process, they destroy a much higher proportion of the seeds. Whereas elephants, they have a quantity instead of quality digestive strategy. So they eat as much as they can, they take the easiest nutrients they can out of it, and as a result, they're dumping a lot of seeds that can then germinate to become trees and plants. Another aspect of Dr. Saker's study entailed measuring the distances of seeds dispersed by the same mammals. And what we found is that for the median seed, the dispersal distance with elephants was about 200 meters, and without elephants, it was about 20 meters. So it was only going 10% as far without elephants as it was with elephants. So there's a class of tree species out there that are evolved to depend on larger animals for dispersal. And as we lose large animals, we are endangering those tree species. Wow, friends, uh, I will say I never knew the power of, of elephant poop and how, how much it can impact the world around us and help spreading seeds. That was so cool to learn. Uh, thank you for that clip, Sangeeta. And just one quick segue before we get into the Q&A is, are there any other ways we should know about that elephants impact the world? Well, I'll talk about the poop a little bit because elephants, do you know that one elephant poops 300 pounds of dung each day? That is one elephant each day pooping 300 pounds of dung. And in this dung, there are so many rich and wholesome seeds because the digestive system of the elephants is not like the ruminants. So the seeds are full. And so 70% of the seeds that are dispersed across the forest floor, they germinate. 
that's how beautiful elephants are in terms of the ecosystem services. And these seeds, they become trees and trees give us oxygen to breathe and take up the carbon dioxide we put into the atmosphere. So that's how powerful they are. They're also considered to be climate mitigators. We all know how in, uh, climate change is impacting our lives. And so by promoting the growth of these trees, they can sequester carbon and thus they can help mitigate climate change. So you heard that kiddos, elephants really help the world around us tremendously. Thank you for that Sangeeta. And what an unbelievable and amazing presentation. We truly appreciate the incredible look into your work. And I have no doubt you've inspired so many of our viewers because you've definitely inspired me to become an advocate for elephants and just to learn more about what they can teach us. So yeah. to all the students and teachers watching on YouTube and to all of our on-screen guests, please join me in giving Sangeeta a, a virtual high five. Kids, I see you out there. Give those high fives up. Yeah, yeah, out on YouTube. Yes, and a huge round of applause. Thank you, Sangeeta. We are showing you our support and love. We truly appreciate you. And folks, it is now the moment you have all been waiting for. It is our question time. So if you're watching online, please send us your questions in the chat bar. We record them all as they're sent in. So please only send each question once. And teachers, please let us know who is asking the question. Yes, so we can give your class or your student a proper shout out. Well, folks, thank you again to Sangeeta. And thank you to all the students and teachers watching. We hope you all join many more of our events. And our next event for ages three to eight will be next Monday, April 24th. Join Explore Wildlife Ecologist Arjun Deer and learn how he protects the planet's big predators, hyenas, lions, leopards, and more by working with local communities. So go ahead and register for this event and more at natgeoed.org backslash Explorer Classroom. You can request a chance to be featured on screen. And fellow teachers, we've also created a new interactive guide for you to share with your students and take them on a learning journey with each of our special guests. Find the Explorer Mindset and Action Guide and Teacher Edition linked on each event registration page. Have a great day, everyone. Stay curious and keep exploring. Bye now. Bye bye. Bye guys. Love y'all. Big hugs. Big hugs. Bye bye.